So here we are folks at it again, wrapping up the year with the best of pocket knives for 2017. We've seen a lot, we've tested out a lot, but these are really the cream of the crop, the best of the best that I wanna share with you guys today that really just stood out for me because of maybe price, maybe it's a particular design, or just overall there's a great knife and I wanna share that with you. We do these annually every year and I know you guys really enjoy seeing kind of the cream of the crop and what rises to the top of the 2017 market that we got to test out and review this year. So let's go ahead and dive into it, see what this year had to offer and what made it to the best of list. So as we get this video kicked off, I wanna encourage you guys throughout this video, if one of these knives stands out to you, use those hyperlinks that we offer to you below over to Amazon as well as to Blade HQ. Uh, when you guys use those Amazon links in particular, that helps us get out there, purchase products, just like what you're seeing in this video to give you guys full comprehensive, honest reviews. So we thank you guys for using those hyperlinks it helps us out continue to do what we do here and be a viewer funded channel. So kicking this video off is the Steel Wheel Cut Jack. This thing comes in at under $40, comes with D2 steel, it's got a polymer handle, ultra lightweight, multiple directional pocket clip, righties, lefties, it's got a flipper, bronze bushings. This thing is ridiculous. The value to performance, to capability, to everything that this thing has designed with it, guys. The Cut Jack, we reviewed it at the beginning of the year from Steel Wheel, is just a phenomenal knife. They have it in a three and a half inch version and in a three inch version. So depending on your size preference or your you know legality of your state or province or country that you live in, this thing has so many things going for it and I love it. And it really is setting the precedent for me of knives that uh, are coming in at under the $40 price point, but giving us great steel, you know, not OS 8 or 8CR, which we're used to, but tends to dull really quick. D2, I mean, this thing has, holds a great edge and then it's really not that difficult to resharpen as long as you don't have to do any sort of reprofile filing and this comes with a great edge without any need to reprofile. So guys, the steel wheel cut jack totally kicks this off and is one of the best knives. Everyone should own one for the price point. You can't go wrong. Next up is the Bug Out from Benchmade. Now we reviewed this at about the middle of the year. If you've been watching the channel, you've been following for a while, you know I love ultralight pocket knives. The lighter the knife, the more I usually prefer to carry it. I love Benchmade, US quality. They just do a great job. And what I, was really funny with me is that uh, this knife is a great ultralight EDC knife. Uh, it's going to come in at just under 100 or just over $100, excuse me. You're getting great steel. You're getting um, ultralight, you know, carry. You're getting a, a deep ride pocket clip, uh, the access lock, you know, all the things that you would know from Benchmade, but it comes in at under two ounces. This thing is ultra lightweight, which is so cool to see. The funny thing is that because it's so ultra lightweight it's a great adc tool for around town um, or those of you who are ultra um like ultra light hikers and backpackers and you just really care about every ounce but the name bug out doesn't really fit for me when i think bug out i think of like end of the world apocalypse and this is going to be the last tool i ever own and i'm never going to be able to buy another tool in my life that's what i think of when i hear the word bug out or i've just got to get out of town and i may have to survive off of this thing and because of how lightweight it is uh, i would if they had called it like the benchmade edc i would have totally got that the bug out was just funny to me it, it's not a bug out knife to me that would be something that would be way heavier way more durable probably like you know steel liners and that type of thing um so like a uh, benchmade adamant you know folder or something like that in my mind is more of a, a bug out blade but as an ultralight edc bench may totally hit it out of the park it's an amazing knife and i totally love it so this next knife because it's so heavy and just so massive it usually would just i would see it i would see the specs and i'd be like no thanks i'm gonna pass but there was just something about the kershaw emerson cqc 11k that totally stuck out to me uh it is, it is a blast it is the, one of the funnest knives i own it's massive it's big you feel like you're you know um, per, the prince of persia or something like that gonna go you know slay some sort of crazy dragon or something like that when you're carrying this thing but man it, it honestly there's just the balance of it handles the almost six ounces or just about six ounces of weight which is a little bit heavier than i prefer i prefer like under four ounces whenever i can get it um the massive belly the design it's just a, a, a wicked fun blade to have if you're looking for fun this is the knife for you regardless forget let all of your rules of edc go to the wind when you're thinking about this knife and just go okay what it, let me just get this you know it's going to come at usually under 40 dollars um you are getting that hcr 
14 MOV steel. It's a decent steel. You're going to have to resharpen it a lot, but you're getting it more for uh, the fact that it's razor sharp and you can keep it razor sharp really easy on any ceramic rod or you know ceramic coffee mug or whatever you want. And it's just so impressive. And it's really actually a really good performer as well in the sense of its slicing capability and just utility tasks. So uh, guys, the um, 11K, CQC 11K is a rocking blade and just probably one of the funnest folders that I bought this year. Next up is the Real Steel Gerfalcon. Love this blade. Uh, I was really impressed with it coming in at under $50. Uh, they have a couple different blade designs. Now, this is a Chinese company. You know, most Chinese made knives, they're owned by U.S. companies. You know, Kershaw, they make a lot of their blades over in the in China. Um, you think of Ontario, you know, they may be using Taiwan, um, you know, different things like that. This is a company that um, is from China, and that's where they're based out of. Uh, but they are picking steels that are, I believe, really pushing the envelope. And that was one of the main things. Not only was it's designed one of the smoothest, easiest flippers, they did some really cool little features with the G10, putting it in certain spots that you don't normally see with U.S. Uh, uh, manufacturers. And then they're picking um, the Sandvik, uh, was it 12, or Sandvik um, 12C28N um, steel, or 14C28N, if I remember uh, correctly, sorry, doing these videos is so much running through my head trying to remember but anyway it's a really good steel really really good particularly for under 50 bucks um, and with all of the fit and finish you know you would expect it if it was by, by a u.s manufacturer probably be about 20 dollars more but um it really shows that you can do things um and manufacture tools regardless of in china or i believe even here with just some upgraded steels uh at a decent price point and you don't have to go with like you know the os 8s and the 8 crs those are all decent, but I would prefer to pay like 25 bucks or less if I'm going to go with that steel. I'm, I'm tired of paying, you know, $35, $45 for knives that maybe look cool, but they're still using low end steels like the Aussies and the HCRs in, instead of like D2s and the Sandvik. So that was one of the major things for me is that I'm looking at a blade that looks like it could cost like $100, but it's coming in under 50 bucks. And that's why the Falcon really stood out for me and is just a fun blade to have around. And it also performs really well and it has a great level of fit and finish and quality next up is the crossbones i saw this at crkt and i'm going to be honest with you guys um crkt has not been on my radar for a long time just because i don't connect with most of the designs that they produce or the materials that they use and when i went over to their booth at shot show i was looking around you know there were a couple things that were starting to pop out to me i was like oh wow i'd actually want to try that out oh wow i'd actually want to try that out and then i saw this folder the crossbones by crkt and uh the, got to meet the, the designer jeff uh uh, and it was crazy because he just walked over me, started talking. And before we knew it, you know, we were having a conversation and uh, got to hear a little bit about the design. And this thing is like a sleek, um, hot, it's a hot, hot blade, guys. I mean, this is a knife. If you're looking for design and you really appreciate aesthetics, um, not that it's not a good performer as well, but the aesthetic level of this knife is just insane and so beautiful. It's a work of art, honestly, guys, as a folder and one of the most beautiful knives that I own, honestly. Um, they use an OS 8 steel, which is a decent steel, um, and it's just got a crazy wicked blade profile. You know, it looks like a fillet knife. So, I mean, it's going to fillet your EDC task with ease. A uh, deep ride pocket clip. It's just got a lot going on with it and I was just super impressed and it made me really put CRKT back on the map for me for their for their designs I was like wow if they're if they're using these type of designers and some of these materials now this now makes me want to see what else they have uh, coming down the line so that's for me guys and I totally dig the crossbones it was definitely on the list for its elegance as well as its blade profile and performance and as we come to the end here, this is what's so awesome. This year, uh, in 2017, uh, my state, Colorado, passed the law repealing uh, auto knives, which is awesome. Was super pumped about that. It opened a whole new world of blades to me to be able to purchase and own legally. Um, so I encourage you always follow your you know state and local laws. Um, don't go out there and you know be buying auto knives and get busted with a lethal weapon. Um, you know for. Uh, for what there's plenty of open assisted or you know manual knives out there that are fantastic but if you do have the option for autos autos are amazing and i went out and i've, I've tested a few uh this year uh as i as you know the, the laws lifted but really the knife for me in the auto range and just one of the knives in general that we reviewed this year was the kershaw launch one usa made 
push button auto, black on black, amazing quality, CPM 154 steel, which is a, a leg up over 154 CM, um, and comes in at right around the $100 price point. I was just super, super impressed, and one of my favorite blades to own in general, regardless if it was an auto or a manual, but the fact that it's an, also an auto with that plunge lock that works great, just totally loved it. Great place to pick up autos is at Blade HQ, because Amazon and eBay usually do not carry automatic knives because of the legal, you know, issues and things like that but i'll have links over to blade hq um, to the entire launch series as well as uh, some other autos that we looked at but really guys for me if you were to say out of all the auto knives and one of my favorite knives that we reviewed this year uh, it really is the launch one it's got a ridiculous amount of belly just the elegance the beauty of the blade as a whole and its performance and the u.s quality and the this i don't have too many blades in cpm uh 154 which is really cool just to have you know a different type of steel that holds a great edge it's a fantastic knife and a great knife to end on for this video. So there you have it, guys. I hope this video has helped you out, show you what 2017 had to offer, the products that we just loved and just are just the best, in my opinion, for 2017 pocket knives that we tested out and reviewed. Uh, always remember to check us out on all the relevant social media. That's a great way to see what's up and coming. Join the conversation. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. And I want to hear from you guys. If you have questions, you're like, hey, what about this knife? Or, you know, whatever it may be. Or, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. And, uh, you know, what about this question I had for you? I always try to answer those comments below. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.